Hey, it's Harrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. Defragging is giving yourself the opportunity and the openness to be truthful and transparent with yourself. So many times we invest a lot of energy in asking other people questions about us. And many times you've got to stop, listen, and try to figure out what your journey is going to be in a, in a process of trying to grow forward without other people's judgment. Vocal defragging gives you the opportunity to go back and listen to your emotions, the inflection, the passion, the lack of interest, to be able to just go in there and see, wait a second, this is the missing puzzle piece. Because so often, even though I do promote writing all the time, when we go into a written journal, I think that the built-in self-editor takes over and likes to use what I call hidden speak. In other words, we'll use a language that we only want to know. Nobody else can know it because we're the only ones that understand the vibration of how you put that, that, that particular sentence together. So I'm, I'm very big into defragging in a journal, but the vocal defragging is amazingly better because of that inflection, the pitch, the volume, the tone. Asking yourself the questions and then questioning the answers. The subject this time around is something that hit me while I entered this beautiful forest as it's going through its transition right now from summer into fall. A nice breeze, the leaves are falling. I call that the final dance because those leaves all summer long have stared at that ground going, on my next jump, I'm going to that floor and I'm going to warm whatever I come in contact with. See, I believe that. I believe that leaves understand the continuation of life, where things are beyond what we think that we know them. But they don't concentrate 100% on the beyond, because if we do that, then we're not appreciating everything that's in our present. But the subject today is, when you are the president and CEO of Me Incorporated. Me Incorporated. That means you are the mom, you are the dad, you are the teacher, you are the coach. You're the one that cleans the house. You're the one that does everything. And somehow, you've got to keep it all together. And if you're in a business of your own, like my wife and I are, and it's not just one, it's several different businesses, then you've got to be the CEO of several Me's Incorporated and make sure that they don't get in front of each other, which is the reason why I openly admit that I live a Google Calendar lifestyle. But the thing is, is that when you are the president and CEO of Me Incorporated, you tend to spend a lot of energy remembering what you called the good times. And I'll give you a good example on that. I'm not going to harp on it. In terrestrial radio, we had a sales department. We had a news department. We had people that were doing the engineering. And we even had a janitorial service. We had all of that. So basically, all I ever had to do was go into the room, do my radio show, do a few commercials, and go home. Well, when you've got your own podcast and you've got your own businesses that you're running from a DJ service to a movie promotions company, and you don't have the luxuries of all of those things that radio once provided, then you sit there and you think, wow, I wish I could go back. And the truth of the matter is, no, I don't. No, I don't. And I think that's the way you might be thinking as well, is that when things are getting tighter, as they are right now, with higher prices, the unrest in the political world, the weather system. Oh my God, all of this pressure is on your back and your heart. And as the president and CEO of Me Incorporated, you're looking at a wall that's saying, what if this next paycheck is my final one? How am I going to move my life around? Now, personally, I have a little bit of a fear in the way of going, I'm lucky enough to have what I have. It is 100% luck. But what happens when the luck runs out? Is that any way for the president and CEO of Me Incorporated to be acting? Having conversations with those around you is a great thing, but don't ask them for a judgment call. When you vocal defrag, break it down. Break down where your fears are, where you're starting to feel a little bit of doubt, and where you might have the strength to say, I'm going to try something new. But in trying something new, I am not a master of reinvention, but I do understand it's going to require a little bit of study, a little bit of hard work, put some grease in those elbows, and get moving. Being the president and CEO of Me Incorporated, let's take the financial stuff out of this. What I'm trying to talk to you about is getting your mind right, 
getting your heart right. But you can't get either one of those in the right position if all you're doing is running away from who you are as a person. Do you know you? Do you understand the many yous? Because we all have several different personalities, but we think just because Hollywood does a movie uh, uh, about somebody who's got multiple personalities, well, I'm not that person. I, I, I'm just going to be this person. But it doesn't work that way because today's world is filled with so much constant change and content that our mindsets are locked on. I don't know who I am. I, I don't want to know, but I want to go back to the good days. Okay, ask that question. What are your good days? Those days where you felt like that you were on top of the world. And what put you there? What was the journey to get there? And there's a big chance that you probably don't know the full, real story. You know of the victory, but you don't know of the hard work, the dedication, the passion, and the drive that it took. I still have memories of winning all of those bowling trophies at Sunset Bowl and all of the city and state tournaments when I was when I was a teenager. I, I loved collecting trophies, but then I got bored with collecting trophies. And the reason being is, is because it's like, come on, I, I got to have some competition here. And it's not that there wasn't competition. It's just that they weren't working as hard as I was. I was sitting there in that bowling alley day after day after day, getting blisters on my thumb because I wouldn't stop rolling the rock, as I called it. But I wanted to be one of the best. Now, why didn't it happen? All right, truth and transparency. I've written about this many times. I discovered girls. It was like, whoa, whoa, what? Yeah, the, my girlfriend became more important than my dream to be a bowler. And from there, all of a sudden, I found myself in radio at the age of 16. Now the girl and the, and the radio outdid my bowling. So I walked away from it. No more sores on my thumb because I wouldn't stop rolling the rock. I had to learn how to become the president and CEO of Me Incorporated by asking the questions and questioning the answers. And there are many times you're not going to be happy with the answers. So then the thing is, don't settle for it. Ask another damn question. Keep asking those questions until you have a little bit of harmony moving through your mind, body, and soul. We tend to think that, well, this is the way I feel. Okay, I have to accept it. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's no written law that says, okay, I'm in this forest today. The breeze is kind of cool. I'm a real stupid butt for being here because I'm barely dressed for, for a fall day. I'm freezing. Oh, I'm an idiot for doing this. Why, why beat yourself up over that? Your friends and stuff like that, they can offer you some help. But you know what? It was your heart, it was your desire that puts you on that path. Now the question is, how would you like to improve the path? To turn it not from a path to another path, but maybe to a street, to a highway, to flight. Learning how to put yourself in a position where personal growth doesn't have to be Mount Rushmore or Old Faithful at Yellowstone National Park. Your personal growth could be a great little victory in just saying, we got this, we got this. As president and CEO of Me Incorporated, today, my equipment in the studio blew up. I lost two very, very valuable interviews that are going to go up on the podcast. Did I explode? No. No, I didn't. I accepted the moment as the moment that it was. And you keep moving forward. I have to be my own engineer self. The writer wasn't upset. The performer in me was not upset. Maybe a little disappointed, but I didn't get upset. I didn't let it raise my blood pressure. And I think maybe that could be an area that you could work on. That when the slightest things go wrong, a lot of people tend to get really pissed off. How about that story about Justin Bateman uh, with Matthew McConaughey when the studio didn't work? Justin Bateman has openly admitted that wasn't a good day. Wasn't a good decision to act that way. I like that openness because now he knows where he can go when he loses control of being the president and CEO of Me Incorporated. Ask the questions, question the answers. I do two forms of defragging in the journal every day, every day. Sometimes it's for 10 or 15 minutes. Other times it could be for a couple of hours. Just ask the questions and question the answers. Vocal defragging, you got a smartphone. You've got ways to record your voice. Get your inflection down. And then come back in a couple of days and listen to it. That's not conceited. That's getting to know you. I'm Arrow, and that's Vocal Defrag. <laughs>